Howdy, Legendary Void here, and today I have my first real uh, Wave 5 deck tech for y'all. Now this is going to be based around one of the super rare characters I pulled out of my boxes the other day. Uh, I'll have links to those videos in the description below if you would like to check those out. Um, but it is going to be over Autobot Trax. Now Trax is actually one of the... <laughs> is the super rare I had the least... Uh, least excitement about whenever I first saw all the super rares um, but after playing him a little bit I see he definitely has some potential with a certain right kind of deck I definitely don't think that the deck that I'm gonna be showing you all here today is the best combination for him but it's definitely something I've had a lot of fun playing with him um, so I definitely recommend you check it out if you do have tracks yourself um, so first of all uh, his ability in his alt mode is actually pretty strong in and of itself uh, whenever you flip to his alt mode, you get to give one of your characters plus one attack until the end of the turn. But if it shares a trait with it, meaning either it is a car or a melee, um, it instead gets plus two until the end of the turn. Uh, this means that if you have other characters on your field that are a car or melee, um, you can give them two attack, otherwise it's just plus one. Um, but either way, that's still pretty strong giving them uh, plus two attack because uh, just looking at the headmasters, there is one headmaster that gives plus two attack and it's valued at four stars. So just giving plus two attack is apparently worth four stars. So that's something to note as of there. Um, but his bot mode ability is also incredibly strong, saying that when this attacks, you get to do one damage to an enemy that isn't a car or a plane. And usually if they're in bot mode, they're not going to be a car or a plane unless it's Windsweeper. Um, but otherwise, you're pretty much going to be doing one damage to whoever you want uh, anytime Trax attacks in his bot mode. So he's got incredibly strong abilities on both sides. Plus, if you really wanted to, you can try and do some stuff with his melee uh, trait if you really want to. Uh, but the other characters we're going to be playing are Twin Twist. Um, so I decided to go the route with this deck where you do a whole bunch of flipping. So of course Twin Twist seemed like a pretty good choice here. Uh, seeing as whenever you flip to his body mode, your opponent chooses one of their characters and does one damage to it. And if you flip this character at least two times this turn, meaning that if you went to alt mode and then back to bot mode, it becomes an armed hovercraft. Uh, meaning you do one damage to each enemy, so he's got a really good ability there, plus he's melee as well, so he does share that trait with Trax. Um, and then in his alt mode, he is also melee, so of course he gets that with Trax. Um, but whenever you flip to his alt mode, he gets Pierce 3, so um, if you decide to do the double flip thing, he does one damage to all enemies, as well as also having a built-in Pierce 3, so he's pretty strong in that regard. Um, plus he's got a pretty decent uh, stat set. Uh, being a 4-12-2 and then a 5-12-2, uh, pretty solid there. Um, and for the head that we're going to be playing on him, we are going to be playing Parsec, which is a one cost head that gives Bold 1, which I believe this is Nautica's head. Um, but Bold 1 is incredibly strong in an aggro deck, so of course we're going to be trying to uh, do as much damage as possible. So Parsec, while also minimizing uh, the amount of stars that Twin Twist is going to be uh, costing, so he is... A 10 cost, Trax is 9, and our last character is a 6 cost, rounding it up to 25, and it's Prowl from Wave 1. Um, since he is a car, he, he'll share that tra uh, trait with Trax, um, but he gives all cars bold 2 whenever he flips to his alt mode, as well as being a 392. So he also can give bold 2 to Trax, should you say roll out, um, as well as also getting to heal 3 from one of your characters if Trax dies before Prowl does. Um, he's also ranged, you can do some stuff with Wedge Formation and Specialist in this mode, so the same thing there. But yeah, that's our character lineup, let's go ahead and get into the battle cards. So starting off the actions, we have two copies of Escape Route. Now this is mainly just so you can keep flipping your guys, as I was saying before, this deck does have a lot of flipping abilities, so of course Escape Route is going to be useful there. We're only playing two, because it is green pip, you can just pull them to your hand as you need them, um, so it's very, very nice there. Uh, we are also going to be playing two copies of Zap. Uh, because Trax lets you do one damage to an enemy, let's say they're two damage short, you can Zap and then Trax kills them with his other damage. Um, and they don't even have to be tapped, so uh, it works with um, characters that they're trying to protect. So very, very nice there. And here's another flipping card that we're running. We're playing three copies of Showing Off. Um, this lets you flip one of your characters basically two times. Um, so of course you get to flip Twin Twist twice and that automatically triggers his ability without actually using your uh, flip for the turn. Um, the only problem is it is a blank pip card so you're going to have to be careful um, and whenever you decide to use your bold there, make sure you know how many are in your scrap pile and in your hand and stuff like that. Um, speaking of bold, we are going to be playing three copies of Supercharge, gives one of your characters bold three. Uh, extremely strong in an aggro deck of course, pretty much a staple in most of them. 
Um, so of course we're going to be playing a few of those. Uh, next one we're going to be playing is three copies of Confidence, since we are playing a full Autobot team. This helps you filter through your deck a little bit better, um, as well as giving you an extra action to drop your hand a little bit quicker. And of course, since this is an aggro deck, we're going to be playing three copies of Peace Through Tyranny. Um, obviously just for the double orange pips, but should you actually decide to kill Prowl off and give yourself another turn, you really can do that, um, because it is six stars or more and Prowl is six stars, so it works out there. Um, and speaking of what I was saying earlier, Wedge Formation, we're playing three of those. Uh, the reason we're playing three of those is just because it gives you a tiny bit of pierce in that they all are orange-black. Um, so it's nice, and you're also getting to heal the damage off your melee characters and drawing off Prowl's ranged. And you can also plan if you really want to from Prowl's specialist side, um, although that doesn't get used too incredibly often. Um, but otherwise, Wedge Formation is really nice just for healing up tracks or Twin Twist should you really need to. Um... Next, we have one copy of Rollout. Uh, this is just a nice little one blue pip card in the deck, as well as being able to uh, flip all the characters on the field at once if you really want to. Uh, the reason we're only playing one copy of Rollout is because it can be a little bit inconvenient at times, uh, having to just reflip everyone back to bot mode, um, and sometimes having Twin Twist in his alt mode will make it to where his bot mode ability won't trigger if you play a showing off on the next turn if you need to flip someone else. It sounds a little bit complicated because there's so much flipping going on, uh, but once you start playing the deck, it actually kind of, all the pieces just start clicking in your head and what you need to do and that sort of thing. Um, and the last set of actions we're playing is two copies of Treasure Hunt. This is just so you can help grab your upgrades off the top of your deck. Um, we aren't playing too, too many upgrades, but the upgrades that we are playing are very important and it would be nice to have a whole bunch of them in your hand at once. So if you do have a free action for the turn that you need to play, Treasure Hunt is definitely good to grab some more upgrades from the top of your deck. For weapons, we have two copies of Flamethrower. This gives a weapon that gives you bold two. So give it onto Twin Twist while he has Parsec and it has bold three. So it's very nice uh, stacking the bold there. But once again, you do have to be careful since there are showing offs in the deck. Uh, you have to make sure um, the odds of you flipping the uh, blank pip is more in your favor than not. Um, but otherwise, Bolt 2 is very strong. That's why we're not actually playing three of them. Uh, but we are playing three copies of Grenade Launcher. Now, this is a plus four weapon. Incredibly strong in almost every single aggro deck since it does give you plus four. Um, but it does scrap at the end of the battle, so of course you have to use that just whenever you can hit something as hard as you possibly can. Um, but yeah, those are the weapons we're playing. I know it's not that many, um, but with the amount that you're going to be able to draw with things like Wedge Formation and the, da the Pocket Processor, uh, you're going to see these at least some somewhat frequently. For armors, we're playing two copies of Fashion Shield. This is, of course, to drop things like Force Wield. Um, since it is a green pip, you can just pull it to your hand after the battle. And the plus one defense is especially nice on the characters that have plus one, or the only one defense, such as Trax. Um, and of course removing the armors is also an incredibly strong ability in aggro decks since it's basically limiting your opponent on how much they can actually defend against you so very nice there uh, and we do kind of three copies of improvised shield uh, again mostly for the double orange pip but uh, it's not too big of a deal but since we are playing the one blue pip and the rollout it does significantly increase your chances of actually flipping it on the tough one so uh, that's that and the last armor we're playing is three copies of force field um, White pip armor that prevents you from taking more than five damage off of one hit um, So very very nice card for keeping your guys alive and so they all have a decent amount of health um, it, Force field is a good way to make sure that they stay alive for a lot longer So for our utilities we're playing three copies of turbo booster since we are playing two cars um, It only seems fair that we should play three turbo boosters seeing as we can untap them whenever they're in their alt mode uh, plus the plus one defense sorry plus one attack is actually really nice there um, and we are also playing one copy of kinetic converter this is mainly so you put it onto twin twist and since you'll be showing off him a lot uh, he'll be flipping a ton allowing you to draw more cards and get a ton of stuff in your hand so basically you have a ton of options for you to use um, it is a white pip that's why we're only playing one because we already have a decent amount of those i think this brings it up to six um, which is a little dangerous in uh, aggro decks since you'll be using a lot of bold, you'll flip a couple of whites, it, then you won't be able to do as much damage as you need to, but Kinetic Converter is going to be on the field um, as often as you play it, so it's not that big of a deal limiting your white pips in the deck down to five. So, And the last card in the deck is going to be one copy of Pocket Processor. You'll typically put this one onto tracks and it just lets you draw an extra card at the start of your turn. Um, great, great card, and since it's a green pip, you get to pull it to your hand. 
Uh, just such an amazing card at being able to draw more than one at the start of your turn, giving you even more options to play from and expanding your hand size. So very, very nice there. Now for the sideboard, I don't necessarily have a character that you could play, um, but you definitely could say play something like um, Legendary Warrior Bumblebee, uh, and that gets another 10 cost to replace uh, Twin Twist and Parsec with, making it just a cars deck. Um, as well as he is also melee in both modes, so you definitely can do that with uh, tracks, so it works there. Um, but as for sideboard battle cards, um, I do have a few that I'm going to show, but we do have Plasma Burst. Um, this is just so uh, if you find yourself unable to do the final blows to certain people, whether it be through the damage from tracks or the damage from Twin Twist, uh, you can throw in a Plasma Burst. Um, just so you can finish someone off because you're doing a lot of direct damage with the deck and if you need to do even more a plasma burst will definitely help there um, we are playing one copy of enforcement batons if your opponent is using uh, battle masters uh, as weapons then enforcement batons is nice for you to throw into the deck to get rid of them entirely so of course we're going to play one copy of that there um, we're also playing two copies of squish them like bugs for whenever you're playing against the small teams such as constructicons or combiners in general um, since it lets you do one damage to all characters with less stars than you if you actually manage to da uh, land damage on one of them anyway, which typically you will. Um, so Squish Them Like Bugs is a really nice card there. Next we have Jam Signals, which is an Orn Pip secret action that lets you block a blue action. So if you find yourself in a long matchup against a heavy blue deck, you can side in Jam Signals and just block one of their blue actions for their turn. So very, very nice there. Um, next we have two copies of Counter Espionage. Now this card is a black green pit that lets you name an action and then you look at your opponent's hand and face down secret actions um, and then scrap each one with the name that you just said. For example, Sabotage Armaments. So if you're swinging in with your grenade launcher, uh, you can play Counter Espionage, call out Sabotage Armaments, flip their secret action, and boom, get rid of it. And you get to keep your grenade launcher, so it's very, very nice there. It is a black pit too, so it's going to help you guarantee damage. Um, sort of like Wedge Formation does. And the last card we are playing is two copies of Belligerent. So since you are going to be playing against a lot of blue decks in this format, if I can only guess and predict what this format's going to look like, um, it lets you turn each blue pip either player flips during a battle uh, into a orange pip instead. So basically uh, your opponent doesn't get any blue pips during one of their defensive, uh, one of their defenses. So and plus it is an orange pip, so it works with the deck. But being able to just stop your opponent basically from defending one time, uh, Belligerence is a very nice card. But yeah, that's the deck take. I'm super excited uh, to maybe do some battles with this since I think our local league has just opened back up again. Um, we're gonna be doing a lot of safety precautions, so don't worry about us, we'll be totally fine. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video and this deck tech, don't forget to smash like and subscribe. And as always, have a phenomenal day. Peace.